So today we're looking at integrating or anti-deriving the trig functions. What are trig functions? Sine and cos are the main two we look at, also tan, but we'll deal with sine and cos to start with. Okay. So if I've got the function, let's just go back to uh, differentiation here. If I've got the function sine equals fx, what's fx? Some function, okay. Could be 4x, could be 6x, could be 4x squared, could be anything. Providing there's an accident. dy dx, there, 4 equals? fx. Sorry. Cos. fx, is that right? What have I got to fix? It's the of the function, very good. So, an example is if I've got y equals sine 4x, derivative of 4x is? 4 times cos 4x. Cool. Now, you'll know that if this was, I'll do a quick adjustment. If I had this as y equals cos fx, I would have negative, this sign, not cos. Does anyone know why that's the case? What is the derivative telling us? Gradient. gradient. Very good. Okay. So if I look at my gradient, what's this function here? Sine function. Do I need to put any values in? No, it's just the shape of my sine function. What is my gradient there? Positive, negative? Positive. Okay. Is it getting steeper or less steep as it goes along? Less steep. What happens here? All right. Let's have a look at this function. That's the highest that point ever gets, doesn't it? Yeah. It then gets less and less steep, or less and less until it hits. Yeah. At about the same point, that yeah. it's zero. Then what happens to my sine function's gradient? Yeah. Becomes, what's that? Yeah. It hits the steepest negative point. Where? In the, In the middle. And then it tapers off. It goes back to zero. So this one gets more negative until it hits its most negative point the same value there, and then gets back to zero. After zero, what happens to my gradient? Goes positive again. My cos function goes positive. Happy with that? So then why does cos, the derivative of cos function, why does that become a negative? Why is that a negative sign, not positive sign? It starts at zero, then goes down. So my gradient starts at zero, and then goes down as it goes through, doesn't it? That's a positive sine function. Is that going negative or positive initially? Positive. So it should go negative, shouldn't it? That's why it's negative sine. Now, why am I showing you this? So what's that function of the So this is a cos function, a positive cos function. So if I look at the gradient of that function, it starts at zero. Sine starts at zero. The gradient then gets more and more negative. So my function should go down like this which is a negative sign, then back up to zero at this point here, which it will do, and then it will trace through. The reason I'm telling us this is because it's that easy to visualise. Can you conceptually visualise that? Can you visualise gradient? Can you visualise area? Let's get a rule, and I'll show you why I'm going through this first. So our rule... Well, what, if the y dx equals f dash x cos fx, what will y equal? So y is the integration of that, isn't it? So what will y equal? So what will happen to the cos? Let's start with that. Will the cos stay cos? It'll become sine. What happens to the thing inside the bracket? Stays the same or does it change? Stays the same. All right. Now remember, well, probably shouldn't have rubbed that off. We'll go back to our original one. If I had sine fx and that equals f dash x cos x, how do I get back to there? Divide by. So I've got fx here, sorry, f dash x already. And then I need to divide by, I'm going to do the, the new one in red. Not that red though. Stop going to that band. 
what's going to happen with my red and my black f dash x there? They're going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with sine of fx, which was our original function. So what's my rule? So I'm going to make a rule up here. Let's get rid of the eg. Here's my rule now. I will explain what's going to happen with that, yes. So I'm going to put y equals the integration. Blake, what's my rule then? Be a great idea, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be cos yeah. fx yeah. over yeah. positive or negative? negative? I'll let you think. I'll give you another one over here. I'll give you another one. I don't want you to all think. The next rule is y equals the integration of cos fx dx y therefore equals um, what happens to my cos? Let's just deal with what happens to my cos. Sine yep. thing inside stays the same. Divide by yep. f dash x. Now there are two rules and as you're probably alerted already, one of them is positive, one of them is negative. Which one is which? So remember, yes. cos. When you find the inside. Yeah. So when you when your derivative is. Derivative is of cos is negative sine, correct? So if we want to go back, which one of these should be negative? Sine or cos? The integration of sine or the integration of cos should give us a negative. Who thinks the integration of sine? Who thinks the integration of cos? You think sine? Why do you think sine? Yeah, so derivative of cos, positive cos gives you negative sign, correct? So if you derive it, so let's just say you had positive sign. Let's say you had negative sign, sorry. So let's say we derive cos 2x. Or let's just say cos x, we derive cos x. We get negative sine x, correct? Yeah. If we want to go back, if we derive negative sine, uh, integrate negative sine x. Oh, because you got to, the negative's got to cancel. So the negative's got to cancel. So which one does it go with? Po cos or sine? Cos. Oh. <laughs> Justification correct, answer not. The answer goes with sine. Okay. So it's I negative. Now, I'm going to ask you again, why do you think I showed you the gradients at the start? Why did I do that? You can conceptually, you know that integration is the opposite of derivatives, correct? Is there a chance that you'll forget which one's negative in the exam? There's a chance I forget when I walk in the door before I start teaching. It's the sort of thing that you'll forget. It's an unimportant small step. You'll know one of them's negative, you won't know which one. So there's two ways. I want you to figure this out. Number one, go with your gradients and go with reverse, like I just said. You know that derivative of cos is negative sine. If you want to get back, obviously it needs to be negative. So your negatives cancel to give you positive cos. The other way you can do it is you can identify well, if the derivative is negative cos. If the cos gives me a negative, it must be the other one for my integration. Cool. So if you remember, one does it for integration, one does it for 
derivatives, you can conceptually say, well, that's definitely, cos is definitely the derivatives. Therefore, sine must be the integration. Cool. As with most of these, it's going to be a lot easier once you get through a couple. So questions 1 through to 5 in exercise 4.5, I think.